Hi there, you're me, your friendly neighborhood humble stroke assaulter. So let's, I didn't make a video last week, I'm sorry guys. Um, I went to six hours a day at work last week. I was pretty tired. So we're going to discuss this now. So you'll notice the last video I did was an edited video. I tried to do an intro and outro. It didn't turn out as well as I thought I did. So I'm going to refrain from doing that for now until I get it to the quality I want to do it at. Um, and then eventually I'll get a better camera than the one that's built into my laptop and we'll move on from there. So let's just discuss my what, sixth week back at work when I went to six hours a day. So I worked six hours a day. Um, I worked Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, I had Thursday off because I had to go to a specialist appointment. Uh, and then worked Friday, Saturday. I had Sunday off. So did a lot more napping than I have the week before. So going that that sixth hour was significantly noticeable. This week, this is now I'm now in week seven. Um, I'm now doing seven hours a day. So it's we're gonna see. Uh, I'm gonna assume that as I increase my interval uh, for the length of time I'm at work, it's gonna be more difficult for a period of time and then get easier, right? So me doing my job is actually pretty easy. I don't don't have a lot of problems. I'm I've just learned to accept the fact. In fact, I had an event today, uh, being the first day of my seventh week back, where I knew something, and I know I didn't exactly know why I knew it, but I'm just like, yep, yeah, don't care. I knew the right answer. I'm not going to care how I know it or how I don't know it or if it is, you know. I just know I just know what I'm doing now more than I thought I did. It's still a struggle. Ambient noise is still very difficult to deal with at times. Um, there are times where I still get really bad headaches. You know, there are times where the ambient noise can still be very troubling, very disheveling. <laughs> so it can be difficult at times to deal with. And that's it's nobody's fault, right? There's, it's not a, a, this isn't a lay blame thing. It's just, it is what it is. Now, certain amp, certain pieces of ambient noise at work that are very loud and come out of nowhere. Like today, someone blew like an air horn type thing at work. I don't know why. And it, it, it immediately just split my brain. Just, I couldn't, it just, I almost went home. It just the reality is I almost went home. Right? Um, I emailed the manager and said, "Hey, listen, whoever's doing that, can you please make them stop? Because that just I can't. My brain no." <laughs> had a few moments on the phone, and I've noticed it. I've had a few moments on my phone where the the speech problems are starting. So I'm hoping that nobody noticed and if they did they didn't say anything which is good um i'm just hoping that those moments become less and less and less and less and less and less um i'd like to think because i took the advice of a few people in my world about not going back to work too soon and going back to work on a gradual you know, you're going to do three weeks or three hours and four hours and five hours and, and build up your tolerance, so to speak. So has this been easy? No, no, it's, it's getting easier. There are still days where I still have struggles. There are still days where it, it's, it's not an easy day. But it's not a wretched, stumble, drag, crawl through kind of day. Still journaling. I'm not journaling every day anymore, um, unless something co comes up that I need to journal about. Uh, one of the reasons why I'm journaling is because my therapist is giving me assignments on how to deal with things if things come up. Just journal about them in a certain format, so I'm doing that. Uh, and then um, I'm also just journaling for me just to see my own progress, right? Because that's really the only way I can, I have a quick reference to my own gauge is 
how well I'm doing is the journal. <clears throat> my body is getting into a routine where I'm sleeping better. Right? Uh, I'm not waking up. I'm, or I'm starting to wake up now more in line with when about the alarm is going to go off. So pretty much before my stroke, because I'm I've always been sort of well the alarm's going to go off at seven. Always been that kind of guy who you know the alarm's going to go off at seven. I'm probably going to wake up at like seven forty five on my own or six, sorry six forty five seven forty five would be late six forty five and and wake up on my own and I'm usually usually awake before the alarm. So. That's better. Um, one of the struggles I'm finding is just getting into that work to home life routine again. Because it's not something I've had to do for six months. And the first month wasn't really a real work week because I only worked three hours or four hours a day. So now I've got to find that, that happy limbo of work life versus home life, right? So now I got to find the time for meal planning, meal prep, things like that. Um, and part of that doesn't really have much to do with the stroke per se, but more with just the length of time I've been away from work. Right? And then this week I'm at six hours, or no, seven, seven hours. Next week I go to eight hours. Um, and that's where I have to make some decisions. Uh, am I going to be able to sustain eight hours a day, right? No, that's just the reality. Am I going to be able to sustain and maintain eight hours a day? I'd like to think so. I really would. I, I realize that there is some potential that may not allow that to happen. And that's just the reality of a stroke. Um, I have to accept that there could be situations or circumstances which may prevent me from being as successful on the timeline that I'm expecting to be. Not that I won't be successful in the way I expect to be, just the timeline, right? Um, so I'm going to have to sit down over the next week and see if I need to make an appointment with my neurologist or GP to, to facilitate the, uh, the lengthening of my return to work plan. I'm not sure if that'll be needed. I guess we'll see and we'll wait and see and that and really if this this episode or this this video had a, a subtitle it'd be wait and see because right now I'm in the position where I've done a month at work it had some really horrendous days it had some really really horrifically terrible days it had some mediocre days and had some great days uh, and that was the first month now I'm into week six Right? Well, actually, technically, I mean week seven. This is to chronicle week six. Um, week six had its difficulties, but they were different difficulties, right? Uh, so every week has had its own unique set of challenges, and, and as I progress forward and, and move through more and more hours, obviously things are going to get a bit more difficult. It's more right now just the fatigue of doing my job, right? Just the fatigue of not being at home, uh, the fatigue of, you know, having to stick to someone else's schedule. And that'd be the true of anyone going back to work after being away from work for six months or a year, right? Like if you've been away from work and you don't have a structured routine, you don't have a structured day, you kind of do what you're going to do when you're going to do it and you do it for as long as you can and then you stop. Well, obviously you're going to get fatigued. So for those of you that are considering going back to return to work from, from anything, like irrelevant, a stroke, just consider the fact that, you know, you've had a relatively unstructured life for however long it was, you know, six, seven months, a year, you know, you haven't had to live by the clock. You haven't had to live by someone else's clock. This is when you start your shift. This is when you finish your shift. This is when your lunch is. These are when your breaks are. You know, like, so I, I've just had to get used to that. And by far and large, it's not really hard to do. It's just getting used to doing it. And that's that's kind of where I'm stumbling at now. Just getting used to being with my time accountable to someone else for the length of time they expect it to be. 
Um, there have been a couple times where last week where I know I was stumbling and the day was just dragging, just dragging, dragging on. And then I knew it was in the last couple hours of my shift. And I'm thinking, well, if you go home now, you're only out a couple hours. So what? But if you go home now, what are you going to get out of it? Now, what do I mean by that? What are you going to get out of it? It's... One, you're going to lose a couple hours in pay. But then again, I'm on a return to work plan, so the insurance company will pick up the difference. So be it. So I'm not really out any money. Um, two, you're now going to have a quote-unquote absence, right? So now I've got to worry about my attendance, and, and maybe I'll get coached or counseled because I'm not attending properly. Luckily, I've not missed a day of work since I've gone back to work. Uh, I've only had to call in. No, sorry, I've called in one day. One day. And that's because my head was just not right. I've not missed any time during a shift. I've never left during a shift. Or the last week there were two instances where I'm like, oh boy. But I take my meds with me to work and I take my meds if I need them. And if I need them, I need them. And if I don't, I don't. And that's the wonderful, joyous thing about that. So, and I'm going to say the fatigue of being at work would be applicable to anyone returning back to work from a leave of absence. It's not so much from the stroke. I get fatigued from the stroke, yes. But that's when I get home, right? I know there's days when I'm at work and I'm really, really tired. Um, but when I get home, that's when I'm going to crash, right? Last week, I did a lot of sleeping after work and... I just have to accept the fact that a month ago, I'd only complete three hours or four hours of work, and I'd be spent, just fucking done. Now, I do six hours of work, five hours of work, and I'm good, right? I'm still tired, but I'm increasing my time. So it's kind of like gaining tolerance, right? But then again, if you've been away from work for, you had a heart attack, you broke your leg, whatever the case may be, you know, I'm going to say that the fatigue of me going back to work and just getting into the routine is not directly the stroke. There are certain things because of the stroke that may make that a bit more difficult. But the stroke has no real bearing on me getting fatigued from just being at work. A couple things I have noticed at work, though. Um, my brain really hates things that are incongruent. Like, really, really hates things that are incongruent. So if I ask someone a specific question where I'm expecting one of two or three answers um, and I don't get the answer that I need, mainly this deals with customers. Um, I'll ask them a specific question about their service and then I need, for some reason, they want to give me a long listed two-minute answer. Like I, All I need to know is this or that. But that's it. I have to bite my tongue. Right. Um, let them finish what they're going to say and then try to rephrase the question so they know there's an expectation of what I'm expecting. Like, no, sir, that's great information. However, I just need to know this or that, which would the case be for you. Right. And, and I don't know if it's the way I'm forming the question. So it's it's me providing a an inappropriate question, a question that's not you know, the best worded, the best formulated. Um, I don't know. I just know that I bite my tongue and let them finish their question, the answer, and then like, no, it's not really what I need. What I need is this or that. So <clears throat> I have to be a bit more patient, I guess the word would be. You have to be a bit more um, mindful. Right? Um, I can't read their minds and they can't read mine, so I just have to be mindful of that. That is one thing that I know is, is because of the stroke. Uh, when it comes to things that are highly incongruent, my brain just doesn't know what to do with it. So, I have to delve out some strategies to deal with that. And again, I'll, my fine, wonderful therapist that I see here in a week or two. Um, not sure when my next appointment is. I'll have to look that up. But something for her and I to work on, no doubt. 
Um, something that will be probably a difficult thing for me to to work around because and, and it doesn't matter what context it is. It, things that are highly incongruent, my brain just does no conceivable way what to do with that. It just doesn't. It, it is what it is. There's not much I can do about that. But on that note, um, week week six being last week went fairly well. Week seven being starting this week is starting off to a good week. Um, I'll let you know at the end of week seven. I'll actually do the week seven video on Friday, so there's no bugger ups. And I'm gonna do another video tonight, more likely uh, comments and comments and questions video. Um, and then maybe I'll try to edit that one, see if I can get that one a little bit better. Uh, guys, let me know what you think about the video that I did for the edit, and we'll carry on from there. But if you happen to either, you yourself personally are going th through the journey of a post-stroke world, or you know someone that's going through the journey of a post-stroke world, or you're supporting someone that's going through the journey of a post-stroke world, please like, share, subscribe to the channel. You might get something out of it. And if you happen to either notice in yourself or someone around you the signs or symptoms of someone that appears to be having a stroke, and those symptoms simply come on like that right that they're, they're they can be immediate right? or they can be progressive and the someone appears to be befuddled or confused right they can't maintain their balance they're not sure where they are um someone who has eye problems they're not able to move their eyes properly they can't move their eyes in one direction they're seeing in like a little circle of the world they're only seeing grayscale they can't see color whatever the case may be someone has facial droop they can't raise both arms equally effectively or at all um, they can't smile equally effectively or at all. They're having speech problems, slurred, stuttering speech, inappropriate word usage for situation or context. They can't maintain their body weight, right? They can't stand unaided. Right? Please immediately place that person in a position of comfort and dial 911. Something so simple may save a life.